Joining us right now is Tim Armstrong. He's the former CEO of Oath and AOL, and now, of course, the CEO of Flowcode. Flowcodes were featured in a number of last night's ads, so you probably have some good data on what was working and what wasn't. We do, and uh, good to see you guys. Great to be here the night after the Super Bowl. You know, it's interesting. We started out the game. We had both uh, the Eagles and the Chiefs. Uh, the NFL uses us for uh, their shops product. We had avocados in Mexico, and we had planters in the game. And so we got to see both our, our executions, but right. also the executions of everyone else. So I think the highlight last night, the headline for me was the fans won. It was a great game. I think the second thing is the brands took very different approaches. And I think brand, brand, big, big brands are back. The platform companies weren't as represented last night. And I think what we saw was half the audience had smartphones in their hands during right. the game. So we saw a super high level of connectivity when, between our partners. When you said the, the platforms were not represented, what do you mean? I mean, just that the, the brands, I think we're in a space now where if you look at like what GM did with Netflix, for instance, that you know, brands are platforms. Their scale and their size are really big and they're really important. And I think over the last few years, you had the Crypto Bowl last year right. and, and a lot of um, technology in the Super Bowl. And I think this year, probably because there's a constraint on capital this year, people had to be more creative in terms of how right. they went to market during the Super Bowl. So I think creativity was better, partnerships were up, and people are really interested in getting their first party data off of the Super Bowl. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Yes. So there's the direct-to-consumer, we want to transact. Yes in the moment, yes. right? And I think for, for the purpose of flow code, a lot of people want, want to use that for, for that purpose. Yes. Then there's this sort of, you know, we're talking about the Duncan ad um, yes. with Ben Affleck yeah. and J-Lo, right? Yeah. Great ad, uh, more of a brand campaign. Yes. I'm not sure if you're going to go online and buy a donut because I don't think you can, or necessarily whether you're going to show up in Duncan tomorrow, maybe it inspires a, a couple of donut shoppers. Yes. How do you think about the distinction between those things and then throw Rihanna in and Apple Music? Yes. So I, I'm, I'll say something a little controversial. If you went to somebody and said there's 10 or 20 or 30 or 100 million people looking at your website and you said you're not going to get any data from it, You'd say, that's crazy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't invest in the website if I wasn't going to be able to use the data. When you look at advertising and you look what's going on in the marketing world, experiences and things like ads on the Super Bowl have tens of millions of people looking at it. And if you're a brand, the fact that you're not taking data off of those ads in a first party way, in my mind, is a big mistake. I think, I think there were some great, ads, some great brand ads last night. Right. But if I went to them and said to their, to their website teams, if you went to Dunkin' Donuts and said, hey, our website's not getting any data from what we're putting up in place, they'd say, hey, that, no way. We're going to have tons of data coming off the website and know how to optimize it. You can do the same thing in your omni-channel media right now, and that's why we built Flowcode, and right. we've been successful at it. But I think there is a massive war for first-party data that's underway. But do you think that every ad needs to have somebody taking their phone up to it and, and trying to buy something or do something with it? Or do you think that sort of the uh, earworm that can yeah. get into your head yes. effectively, either, that's, a, that's a musical thing, but, you know, get into your head, okay, now I'm going to go to Duncan or I'm going to go, you know, I watched Rihanna during the halftime show, right. you know, I'm a Spotify person, but now I'm going to switch to Apple Music. I mean, I mean, Andrew, I'll, I'll tell you this. Brand advertising needs more connectivity, and the Internet needs more branding. So I would say there's like a combo where they need to flip-flop a little bit and have more, like more of the mixture of the two. The second thing, though, is if, like let's take the Apple Music example. Why not sign people up directly off of the Super Bowl instantaneously to adopt Apple Music? And so I, I looked at the game last night. There's some brand ads that didn't need to have codes on them or direct connectivity. But there were a ton that did need it. And there was also a bunch that had connectivity where it was broken. Right. And I think after watching Coinbase last year and watching how their site broke, I'm not sure like putting that level right. of investment in the Super Bowl where you're not going to use um, you know, a product right. that works really but well. But that's about creating a subscription.